Hello and welcome to The Spiritual View. I'm Jennifer Halliburton with The Awakened Gen Tarot and I'm one of the hosts for The Spiritual View. And today I'm going to be bringing angel messages for us. So we're going to be checking in with the angels to get three themes for September. And so it's going to be similar to a pick a card in that you're going to be choosing uh, between one through three. And whichever number you choose is going to be the main theme that you're going to be dealing with this month. But all of these themes are going to be present uh, for the whole month for all of us. But then, like I said, you're going to have one that's going to be just a little bit more impactful and just for you. So you're going to choose right now one through three, and that's how you're going to know which one is going to be your most important theme for this month. But before we get too far into all of this, I want to go over some housekeeping with us. All right, so let's see, let's get this up on the screen. Okay, so just a reminder about all the things that we have going at The Spiritual View. We have our daily videos that we do, and so we have seven readers, and we have seven days of the week, and so we've each uh, taken on one day of the week to provide a reading for you. And so be sure to be checking those out each and every day. We've got something new for you going on here. I do Tuesdays. And so I alternate between uh, angel messages one week and then twin flame Tuesday on the next week. So this is our angel message week. And then uh, next week we'll get back to the twin flame. We have our live card pools that we do on Mondays and Fridays. And uh, we have an appointment important announcement uh, that this week we're going to actually be changing the time for our Friday lives to 6 p.m. Eastern. So um, it's just been too hard for me to try to get here for that 5 p.m. time because I'm picking up kids from the school and I've just been late every single time. So we've made a decision that we're going to push it one hour later so that I can get here and we can all just kind of enjoy the time together because it is something that we all do look forward to each week. We are kind of still adjusting how these things work. And so uh, we appreciate just every part that you've played in helping us bring all of this together and just where it's going in the future with us. All right. And we also have our monthly episodes. So each month we have a monthly collaboration episode where we cover a specific topic for the month. It's a lot of fun. It's the third Friday of each month and it's at 6 p.m. Eastern. And on those monthly episodes, we do a private reading giveaway. So uh, that's uh, another important reason to stay tuned and um, participate. All right. So let's see. Let's get back to the reading. All right, so before we get started, let's go ahead and take three deep breaths together and do the invocation to call in the spirit team. All right, so if you'll close your eyes and breathe in. That's one. Breathe in. That's two. Breathe in. That's three. I now call in my angels, archangels, ascended masters, my higher self and guardian angels to please enter this present space and time. I call upon Archangel Michael to place a bubble of protection around us. Only beings of the highest vibration of pure love and light may enter in. So be it. All right. So have you chosen your number between one and three? So I'll just go ahead and give you the overview. The three themes for the month are cut the cords, power and intention, and ease and grace. And so with cut the cords, that means we do have some releasing that's going to need to happen. With power and intention, it's really showing us how powerful we are and where our power really comes from. And with the ease and grace, we are moving into a lot more easier days because we're getting more into the flow state. All right. So we're just going to start with group one or theme one is cut the cord. All right. And so I'm going to get a second screen up so that we can put the cards up. All right. So. The first theme of September for us is cut the cords. And I'm going to go ahead and just read from the book what the guidance here is. 
In spirituality, cords are energetic bonds that connect us to a situation, person, or place. There are different types of cords, but in this context, there are connections to situations or people that can have negative or draining effect upon us. We can also create neg a negative cord when we have an expectation of the outcome or a situation, especially when it is outside of our control. So this is an important time for you to release any attachments to people, places, situations, outcomes, or anything else that could be limiting your experience of joy. Angels are wrapping you in a light of love so that you can lovingly detach from situations that could be draining, dramatic, or damaging your health or purpose. If you are finding yourself hanging on in a situation you know is unhealthy or negative, Angel Wisdom is encouraging you to call upon the help that you need to release yourself from it. Know that angels are guiding you to surrender the need to direct and control at this time so that you can welcome in the spiritual support that is available to you. When you ask your angels to support you in cutting the cords, they will help you dissolve the connections that are hooking you into a negative situation. You have to do your part by removing yourself from harmful and draining situations. If you have any questions regarding a situation, relationship, or outcome at this time, know that you are being guided to find a new way forward as it will be more rewarding and replenishing for you. Ultimately, cutting the cords is an act of self-care and self-love. And so there is some cord cutting that needs to take place. There are things that are just hanging on in your environment right now that are holding you back from where you're trying to get to. And so one theme, one big theme for September is we are cutting cords from the things that no longer serve us. And so we do have the eclipse coming in on September 17th. And this eclipse is about, you know, fate faded energy and it's usually going to bring in some form of release because it's coming in with that full moon and full moons are all about releasing and so i feel like we have this time right now as we're in this new moon energy where we're setting our intentions about the things that we're wanting to bring into our lives that we have this time to bring in that focus of the things that we're wanting to cut loose in, in September. So it's not going to be just like all of a sudden you just, you hear this message today. Oh, I've got to go cut it loose. No, right now we're in the season of setting our intentions right now. We're putting things into, um, we're putting new things into place and it's going to come to the time near that. Um, it's going to come time when we get to the full moon, which is also the eclipse that we're going to be in that that introspection where we're going to know what things need to be cut out from our lives. And I feel like that this is going to be dramatic in that sense is that we're going to know like just very, very clearly, this isn't going to be just like, I think we need to kind of give us some space. I feel like this is going to be like just completely ending, just complete endings coming in. And so I pulled with the tarot and I actually have a new tarot deck that I'm pretty excited about. It's called uh, the biblical tarot. So all of the cards have some sort of Bible story that's connected with it. I just thought just how amazing is that? Um, especially for these readings too. So um, with the tarot, I pulled three cards to show me what is going on. You know, what are the things that we're needing to cut the cords with? why these specific things, and then the advice for that. And so what we're cutting um, the cords with is this eight of grains, which is this eight of pinnacles. So the eight of pinnacles is, um, it's something that we have put a lot of work into. It's a mastery level. I mean, we've kind of gotten to as much out of this as we can possibly get out of it. So it's something that, and it feels very work related on this one. And um, I mean, it's just if it's not work, it's something that felt like a lot of work. So this is uh, just you put way too much effort into whatever the situation is that you're needing to bring, you know, that ending, that release to cutting the cords with. It's something that you put your the most of your energy into is the thing that has 
this negative attachments with it. And so why is that the case? We have the 10 of feathers, which is the 10 of swords. And so just, you can even look at the picture that's in this card. Um, the story that it's talking about is because of the connections that you've had, it has decreased your power, your effect. And so like what's happening in this card is where Samson is losing his power. Um, and it was all because of the attachments that he had because he stayed attached to places that he shouldn't have still been attached to. So now then it's time to release the things that no longer serve us to really see very clearly the things that are not serving us and to bring in that separation before it, it brings in our own downfall. So let's be in control of this. And instead of uh, just like passively being drawn through this because, you know, Samson's story, he got betrayed and it, it was, he stayed way too long in a situation. He even had the proof, you know, it wasn't that he didn't even know that she was doing this to him. He had the proof that it was happening and he still stayed in this place knowing it wasn't a good place for him. And it ultimately cost him his power, which ended up leading to his ultimate demise. And, but it, that story goes further in, but it he uses it. He learns a lesson from it, but let's learn the lesson before we get to this place. So the advice here is the four of feathers, which is the four of swords. And um, this is about Elijah's retreat into silence. And so it is about uh, finding the healing, finding the place where you actually belong, pulling back away from... Um, the normal from what felt comfortable. I think again, because you put so much energy, we're coming back to looking at this card right here with it. You've put so much energy into this thing. I know that it's hard to pull yourself away from it. That's the things that's, that's kept you in it for as far for too long is because of the effort that you put into it. You felt like, you know, there was a level of obligation to keep with it because of what you put into it. But your guidance here is to pull back, to just kind of pull back, find your safe space so that you can just have time to not do as much. Definitely, this is a workaholic energy too. The eight of um, the eight of pentacles can be a workaholic energy. So it's pulling back, taking time to take care of yourself. This is about rest, healing. The four of swords is about rest and healing. And so that's just kind of, let's find our shelter. Let's find the thing that kind of can give us um, almost like that cocoon space so that we can restore our own internal balance again. So the bottom of the deck, what you don't see is judgment. So you are actually being called onto a whole new path right now. And so even though it feels like, um, like, utter destruction, probably as you're trying to make these shifts, as these endings are coming in, whether you are initiating it or someone else is initiating it, um, the cords are being cut because you're being called onto a whole new path. Um, so the judgment card is about um, your true soul calling and about releasing your true essence into the world. And when you release your true essence into the world, you're actually automatically aligning yourself with the right people and the right places and the right connections just because you're you're now emanating at that that vibration the vibration of your true soul alignment is now shining super bright so um the first theme of of september is cutting the cords of those things that no longer serve us. And it looks like it really is about the things that we put in too much effort into just and knowing that it wasn't ever going to get us where we're wanting to be. All right. So that's theme number one. So I'm going to clear the table and then we'll get ready for theme number two. Okay. So theme two for September is power and intention. When you align your intentions with the highest good and act with love and consideration, your power is intensified. When you draw this card, your angels are drawing close to remind you of this. You have the capacity to be a leader and a guide at this time, and you are being encouraged to align with love and the highest good so that you can act from the heart. 
When the power arises within, we can find our ego gets louder. And this is because it wants us to be limited and to question or even stifle our growth. Don't let it hold you back now. Call in the angels and invite them to help and listen to help you listen closely to the voice of your soul so that you can move forward powerfully and effectively in a loving way. Angels are encouraging you to reconnect with your initial idea and intentions for whatever you are thinking about at this time or even if you're for your entire life. Often we have an initial intention and then over time our ideas change. The universe is still responding to our initial intentions though because we haven't let them go and when we let them go we let God. So if you are confused about how to move forward at this time you need to recognize that you are a powerful being with the influence and potential. Having a clear conversation with God and your angels about your intentions and recognize what is unfolding at this time has the power to allow you to live your life from a space of pure potentiality. And so, I mean, one part is just remembering the power of your thoughts, the power of your intentions. And um, I do think that especially because it was talking about um almost like this inadequacy feeling because out of the rest of the cards that came out, the next card that um, explains where this is being impacted in your life is this page of grains, which is the page of pinnacles. So the page of pinnacles is a beginner. And what it says here at the bottom of the card is Priscilla teaching the teachers. And so I think that that's the thing. That's the inadequacy that we're feeling is that a lot of us really are rising up to be called to be leaders, to be teachers. And something about that feels very intimidating. We don't feel like that we are the ones that should be in the lead because we're not even that much further ahead than you know anyone else, right? We're, and we may not even feel like we're even ahead at all, but we're all headed on the same path. And it's like, because no one quite knows what direction to go. They're all looking to someone to be like, okay, this is the next step. We're all needing someone to look to that this is the next step. So I feel like that that's one of the things is that we are going to have this rise in leadership, just a natural leadership coming out. And that that part is um, possibly going to be intimidating to you if you're one of the ones who's just kind of naturally rising into that leadership role is that you're, you're not necessarily like, like it's saying so far ahead, the teacher of the teachers tells me, I mean, you are at such an advanced place yourself because you're working with this advanced group of people. You're leading a very advanced group of people. So, I mean, that says a whole lot about where you're at yourself to ha even have the ability and like leadership. It does come in in a very natural kind of way. If you kind of just watch a group of people, you can have one person who is really trying to force their leadership onto that whole group and the whole group can be very resistant to it just because they can feel the energy of the force and that force is pushing away. That's a, a repellent. But then you have that one person who is just, I'm headed this way. This is the way I'm going. And even if they have no idea why they're headed that way, they feel just so, so driven and drawn towards this particular path that it's causing everyone around them to take notice and say, I'm following her. She has this level of confidence that just it's like, that's where I need to go. I don't feel the level of confidence yet. I know that there's a direction I need to go, but that person clearly they're headed. They feel the call and they're moving with the call. And so that's how natural leadership even pulls in. So you don't have to even stress about, oh, I've got to be the leader. It's going to naturally just kind of align if that's just the purpose that you're being called into and the direction that you're just naturally headed. You won't have to call people to come with you. You're going to look back and they're going to already be following behind you. And you're going to be like, well, how did that happen? And that's just because it's just this natural evolution that you're being called into at this time. Um, 
that's the power. And I mean, I feel like you set some sort of attention. It's going back to this card here about the power and intentions is that that's the level of power you had when you set this intention to go on this path that, I mean, you had just that clear, like, this is where I need to go. Even if you didn't have the full plan in, in front of you and you knew that the path was going to come ahead of you, that's why the people are following you. I feel like that that's something with this group, for sure, this part of the message, uh, the ones who are feeling the most caught resonating with this part of this message, you really are stepping into this leadership role and it's kind of freaking you out. <laughs> so you feel like you're not, um, you're not the one, you're not the one that people should be following. And you know, why is that? And it's because of the nine of candles, which is the nine of wands. So it's because you've, you've had a very difficult path and maybe you're not quite off of that difficult path yet. Maybe you're just still kind of like making your way through it. This is Satan's test of Job. And so, you know, Job was rewarded for sustaining, you know, for making it through. That's how he got rewarded. And so that's why people are looking at you. It's not because it was easy for you to get here. They see that the path was difficult. They see the effort that it took for you to withstand Stand, you know, to make it to this point. That's also why people are following you. They've seen, they've seen what you've been able to accomplish with nothing, with nothing. You know, like you're the one, you're the leader of the pack. No one was showing you the way, but you found your way out of, you know, just a very, very difficult place and you shine. And now then God's favor is able to shine upon you too, because you made it through that. And that's the favor now is like the rise in leadership. And um, the advice here is the Queen of Cups. Um, so the Queen of Cups is, it's just leading with your heart, staying in your heart, leading with your heart. And I think that that's also part of that, just the way that you naturally evolved into that leadership space is because you followed your heart. You stayed in this space of love, even for yourself. So you, the reason why you even got on the path was because it was an act of self-love. You felt called to go into this direction, no matter what, no matter what, you know, what you were going to face along the path. You knew that this, this path had treasure for you. So you took it. And so you follow that with love. You follow this path with love. And so that's still the guidance is just to have that level just going in. With, let me see what it says even right here with this verse it has on it. I prayed for this child and the Lord has granted what I asked of him. So now I give him the Lord. And so now I give him to the Lord for his whole life. He will be given over to the Lord. And that Samuel... 1 27 through 28 and i know right here marcia is going to be connecting with that card <laughs> she's going to be very much connecting with that card um but i mean that's the level of faith and so like once you see this i mean just be grateful give this back in dedication to the lord so this has been given to you because it, you have prayed you have put in the work you were you withstood so the reason why you're being put into this position is because uh, it's it's a gift that's being given to you. This is the reward for what you've overcome. And so the advice is now just give that service back to God. Don't, it's not even something that the ego needs. And I feel like there's ego. Okay. So the ego is involved in that. So let the ego go. This is a gift. You earned this the hard way and you're not even forcing it. It's just naturally happening. People are just naturally following behind you because you've shown that you do have a dedication that you do know, like just you have drive, you have ambition, you have all of these things that are leadership qualities that make it make sense that people would be following you. And so um, from the bottom of the deck, what you don't see coming is temperance. Um, so that's about having patience. And so the story that it's bringing up here is the Mary and Martha. And so the Mary and Martha story is really about knowing um, which acts of service are really important at what time. So you had, you know, the two sisters that had two very different 
ways of living in the world. And so um, you had one that like she knew she had someone very important coming. And so I've got to get everything ready. Everything has to be perfect. She was all about the do, do, do the work, work, work. Very Capricorn, very Capricorn energy. So she was making sure that, you know, just the house looked spectacular, that we had the right food set up, the right drinks, that the right people, that no, that the wrong people wouldn't be showing up. She had everything in order and a whole plan. And then you had the other sister who knew that this was a really important opportunity too, but it was so different for her because she realized this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me to be able to learn and grow and expand. If I just stay present enough and, you know, take, you know, take hold of this opportunity. So she wasn't stressed about like making sure that the rest of the place looked a certain way. She didn't need all of this to impress in any way. There's, she was releasing her own ego of like, what the thing needed to look like, how it needed to work so that she knew how to take opportunity when it showed up for her so that she knew how to take advantage of the opportunity when it showed up for her. And so um, I feel like that that's, that's the thing is like not being so quick to needing the plan, needing that, you know, needing the actions so that you're present enough to be able to, to know the opportunities when they're showing up. And um, so with it being you know, what you don't see coming, I feel like that there is this opportunity, that there's going to be this opportunity of, to be able to learn something. And, and you're going to be in too much in your head. So get out of your head and be present so that when this opportunity shows up, this learning, this great, I mean, it's like, You have to be present or you will miss this opportunity. If you get too much in your head about the needing to do, 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 the work, 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 you will miss this opportunity. So let's get more present. And so, I, I mean, I just feel just there's a lot of mental energy that's connected with this part of the reading is that we're very much overthinking, you know, our own adequacy. And, and not just letting that just evolve just in this natural sense, not realizing how much we're, we're giving away a lot of our power by just even um, questioning, by even questioning what's naturally kind of occurring. So I think that that's theme number two is to re start remembering just what our own power is and um, not to diminish it, like not to allow our own thoughts to diminish it, not to take it away from us. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward with the third theme for the month of September. Okay, so the third theme for September is ease and grace. So I do think that we are going to find our flow, but it might take just a little bit of struggle to get there. So let's see, ease and grace. This is a time to learn and adapt. You are being guided to slow down, take your time, take in the current moment and allow space for events to occur. You often put too much pressure and expectation on yourself, and this is not required. Also, with constant effort and rush, you'll find yourself becoming overwhelmed and tired. When you are too forceful, you use up too much energy, and that may hinder your progress at this time. If you are in a difficult situation at work or with other people, don't feel that you have to prove your skills, talents, or worth. Just step back and breathe, and through grace, you will be seen, understood, and recognized for who you truly are. You are being guided to flow like water. Don't, have, don't feel the need to rush or force your way ahead. A gentle approach will be more rewarding. Have patience and move with subtlety and grace. Your angel guide is encouraging you to see life as a dance one step at a time you will make your way through this incredible journey 
learning more and growing along the way. How can you move with more elegance? How can you slow down? How can you bring more grace and poise to your current situation? This is a time to soften, breathe, move in a way that is steady but flowing. This information may come as a surprise or even as a challenge to you, but your angels know that it will be beneficial for what is coming your way next. And so again, I do feel like that <clears throat> before the ease gets here, there's going to be something that triggers us and it's going to feel a little bit conflicting. So there's something that's just like, and the, the thing that triggers it is just meant to kind of bring awareness to where things are out of flow. It's showing like where you're going to run into, you know, the, it is the block. It is the block to the flow. And so we are trying to get into more of a flow state. Um, but in order to do that, we have to actually identify the blocks and remove the blocks so that we can get into the flow state. So um, what we're dealing with is the Knight of Pentacles. <clears throat> and so here it says Jacob works for Laban. And the story of that is actually um, he got tricked. And so it took a lot longer than what was actually necessary for it to do. So he made a deal with Laban that he was going to work for seven years so that he could marry his daughter, which is ridiculous, you know, but that's what they did. And um, when the day came, the Laban tricked him and told him that he had to marry his oldest daughter because his oldest daughter had still not been married yet. And so if he wanted the second daughter, the one that he was really in love with, he'd have to work for seven more years. So it just took a lot longer than what was absolutely necessary because he didn't read the fine print. He didn't actually ask all the right questions or think his way all the way through it. And so there were bumps in the road that made this you know, take longer than necessary. So that's how come we're having to really focus on, you know, what are these things that are blocking our path right now? Because we didn't read the fine print and now then we're kind of being stuck with the consequences of that. And it it's making things take longer or feel like it's taking longer than what we had originally intended for it to. And so the why of that is the King of Pentacles. And so um, <clears throat> why do we need to... Um, readdress this stuff? Why do we need to really work on clearing these blocks? It's because it's blocking our stability and our abundance. And so the uh, King of Pentacles, it has on here the Joseph in charge of Egypt. And so when Joseph was in charge of Egypt, the reason why they put him in charge is so that he could prepare the land um, as he had already had visions that famine was coming. He was using his own spiritual gifts to kind of like tap into, you know, what he could do and position himself uh, correctly too. So um, he had already told the Pharaoh that he had been having these gifts and he decoded these other people's dreams too, including the Pharaoh's dreams that was about um, the famine. And so that's how he got put into that, position of leadership because he was able to see that. And so now we can prepare for that. And so because they had prepared for that and put him in that place of um, leadership, when the famine came, Egypt had plenty enough to go around and to give to the other nations too, which made it quite powerful at that time. And so, um, you know, that's the thing. It's blocking our ultimate abundance, our ultimate stability by not really inspecting and removing these blocks. And so the advice here about getting us into this ease and grace is the queen of wands. And so the queen of wands is she knows what she wants. She goes after it. She gets it because she knows she deserves it. She doesn't settle for less than what she knows that she deserves. And so um, she's not stressing about the things that, you know, She's having to let go. She doesn't put too much thought into like why something didn't work out. It just, it didn't and it wasn't supposed to. So now I'm going to, kind of, you know, just keep moving. Um, so it says Deborah, prophetess and leader. Now, Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapita, 
was leading Israel at that time. And I mean, it just really think about just the power that woman must have had to be able to lead is Israel at the time, you know, at that time frame when women were not respected for any type of leadership role. So she had, you know, a strong power and influence over many. Um, and I think, you know, it's just that solid knowing who you are and I'm just not settling. You cannot make me any less than what I, I know that I am. And I mean, that's just her authority just preceded her. So um, what you don't see is the three of pentacles. And so there is help. So you don't have to do this completely by yourself. I feel like people are more willing if we're just honest about what we're trying to accomplish. I think it's just being... Um, just more open and in, into okay here's the goal here's what i'm trying to accomplish i don't quite care how we end up you know getting there and who can help me in this process who brings in this who brings in that this is what i'd like to see and i feel like that once we start getting that just that piece out that that's where the right people are going to start stepping up. Well, I could do this to help in and I can do that to help in. And we're going to all just start building this community together that makes it flow much better. That you're not doing it completely by yourself, but there are some blocks right here. And maybe one of the blocks that um, you know possibly could be is this need of doing it all on your own. It has to be you doing it or it won't be done right. Maybe that's one of the things that needs to be let go of. Um, but we're just trying to get into how can we flow better? How can we release the need to control, you know, just anything outside of ourselves? Cause we can't, we can't control anything, anyone outside of ourselves. So we can only be presented with, okay, here's how something is showing up for us. Here's what we're trying to accomplish. What do we need to do with this information and just use it as information, not something to, you know, get, you know, overly emotional about reactive to just use it as information okay here's what i'm trying to accomplish over here and this is what's being presented to me how is this to stay in flow state you know how is this impacting where i'm trying to go what do i need to do with this to stay in flow state so just i mean you're just thinking about what flow state is okay so we're just kind of flowing our way through life and now we have this obstacle that's coming on our path well if we're paying attention. If we're here in the present enough that we're seeing it coming, what are you going to do? Like you're going to have to either find your way around it. Sometimes the obstacles are big enough that you have to completely stop and get it out of the way before you can move forward. But whatever this is, it is in the path and it has to be dealt with. And I think that's the thing is that we're trying to not have to deal with it, but not dealing with it isn't bringing in you know, what we're actually wanting. And I think that people are more willing to deal with it. It's just right now, nobody knows that it's there. It's like, it's kind of, it's kind of, we kind of see it. It's like, everybody feels that there's, there's something here, but nobody is able to just completely put their finger on it, that this is the thing. It's just everybody's still kind of like diverting their attention because they're afraid if we actually look at it, it might look really scary and it might make us have to, you know, turn around and go a different direction. And we're not wanting to do that. But that thing is literally that important because it's holding up our flow state. It's holding up us having that easier life that we're, we're saying we're wanting to get to. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see, remove this camera we will close it out there but i'm going to close it out with the art of manifestation oracle so what can we do in the month of september as we are working with these three big energies and themes to help bring in our manifestations all right so internal dialogue Okay. We all have an internal dialogue within our mind, a constant stream of inner conversation. Is your dialogue kind, supportive, and affirming, or is it critical and judgmental of both yourself and others? 
This card asks you to listen to your inner words and if necessary, take steps to consciously change your language. And so we're just being reminded of really how powerful our thoughts are and the thoughts, you know, are that internal dialogue. What are we telling ourselves really about ourselves? And I'm coming back a lot with that, um, with the second message of the second theme of September about the stepping into leadership, because there was just so much of that self doubt that was coming in that, that um, just feeling inadequate that was coming out of that. And so that's definitely about the stories that you're, you're telling yourself in your head, but even in um, the ease and grace, you know, the, like what you're telling yourself about, oh, it'll get better. If I just kind of don't, don't pay attention to it. If I just brush it you know, to the side, it'll get better. And um, what was the, even the first one was cut the cords. See, again, it's just that you're, it's what you're telling yourself about the situations that you're in that's prolonging it um, and from resolving prolonging it from being able to get you to where you're trying to get to, to prolonging your manifestations. And so we've got to adjust these things. So I think that there's going to be just a lot of self-empowerment. I'm feeling out of all three of the themes, there's just a lot of self-empowerment. It's really about getting to know who you are on just, I mean, just to your core. Like, do you know that you know that you know? And so when you know who you are, just that strongly, when someone speaks against who you know you are, like they cannot know. You can say a whole lot of things about me, but like right now, if you told me my hair was blue, I absolutely, I will never accept that my hair is blue. You cannot in this moment make me think that my hair is blue because I know, I know that I know that I know that my hair is not blue. So there's no way that there's anything that you could say, no way that you could twist this to make me believe that my hair is blue because it's just not, it's not the truth. So if I know that so strongly about my hair, then when someone says that I'm a greedy person, do I know that that's true? Or do I know what, what do I know is the truth of that? If I know that I know that I know that it's not true, there's no way, nothing anybody could say that would ever make me think that, yeah, no, I showed up greedy in that moment. Nope. Because I know that I know that I know that I'm not a greedy person. Or if they say that you are um, just mean, they say that you were aggressive. If they say that you were rude, if you know that you know that you know who you are, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. They're, they cannot, because if, if it's as clear as, like I said, as, if it's as clear as to you, so the only way that they could even possibly make you think that if there's somewhere in you that doesn't know, that doesn't know, am I a greedy person? Am I an aggressive person, an angry person? Am I someone that people need to be you know, afraid of and protect themselves from? There's no way that anyone, if you know that about yourself, if you know that you know that you know you're not those things, that anyone could ever convince you. So like that's a part of an introspection that I think is going to be needed um, is if you're having a reaction to something somebody says about you that you know is not true, then you've got to inspect that that place right there of there's clearly a part of me that's at least afraid that it could be true. So why do I not know this about myself? And what can I do to make sure that I do know that I know that I know just as clearly as I know that my hair is red and not blue? How can I know that I am a good human who would not harm another soul? How can I know that, you know, my intentions are pure? Well, do you know that? You know your intentions. You know where you were coming from. So having just that solidness where nobody can actually, you know, sway what you truly know to be true about yourself is really important. So, 
All right. I'm going to close it out there. Hopefully you found value in this. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to this channel. You can hit the bell for notifications and it lets you know every time we post new videos. We post daily videos by uh, a different reader each day of the week. We do our lives on Mondays and Fridays. And then we have our monthly episode on the third Friday of each month. All right. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you next time. Bye.